Hi, I'm Marissa King. I'm a Senior Communications Advisor with Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro. And I'm here with Jim Haynes. He's the Vice President of Regulated Operations with Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro. And we're here in the Energy Control Center, what we call the ECC, in the head office, uh, Hydro's head office here in St. John's. So, Jim, can you explain what is the ECC and what, what happens here? Okay, the ECC is the Energy Control Center. This basically is uh, the nerve center basically for the island generation transmission system. And the folks behind me, they basically turn generators on, turn them off, they turn transmission lines, they turn, you know, turn them on, turn them off uh, throughout the day as required to meet our customers' load. So over a period of a day, from midnight to midnight, the load will be will move around. Obviously, when people are asleep, the load is low. In the morning, when they get up, it increases a little bit, and then when they get home from supper, it increases a, a bit more. So, so those folks actually, you know, trying to maximize our efficiency of generation with respect to the amount of fuel we burn uh, that we don't spill water, they will actually, you know, pick the generators that need to go on from an economic dispatch point of view, or the computers help them do a lot of that as well. Uh, just to make sure we do it efficiently, effectively, and safely. And, and they also, you know, uh, determine when some equipment can be taken into service for doing maintenance and things like that. Okay, so this week, Hydro uh, advised the public that one unit at Holy Road is out of service and may be out of service for a while. Um, can you explain what happened to the unit and why it's out of service? Yeah, uh, first of all, Holyrood is, uh, you know, one plant of uh, many we have. We have three generators in Holyrood. We have Beta Spare, Cat Arm, Hines Lake, Upper Salmon. We have a couple of diesel plants, gas turbine plants. So Holyrood is one element of that total supply system, which, which they manage from the point of view of how many megawatts they want uh, generator and so on. So uh, during the storm, which was an unusual event, we had a lot of wind, uh, we had a lot of snow, we had some, uh, pretty sure we had some uh, uh, salt spray. Uh, none of which are great for the electrical system with respect to wires moving around the wind and things like that. And we suspect, still doing you know, a, a fairly detailed analysis, that we had a short circuit. And basically there was, uh, during that process, there was some damage sustained to unit number one at Holyrood. And we're still doing the investigation on that part. And uh, we just can't just dive in and fix because we have to know exactly what needs to be fixed, what the process is to do all that, and what materials we need and so on. So that's still under review. Can you tell us a little more about the Holyrood plant? You know, what role does that plant play in providing power to the island of Newfoundland? Yeah, well, Holyrood is the you know the biggest plant on the Avalon Peninsula, which is our biggest load center. And there are three generators there: uh, two at 170 megawatts, one at 150. The first two were built in the 1970s, 1970-71. And the third machine, the 150 megawatt machine, was built in 1980-81, or you know, two or three years added on after construction. That's when it came online. So it, it is a uh, you know an integral part of our system. Uh, all the plants are connected by 230 kV transmission lines generally, and they they all contribute to the grid. So you know we do plan for unavailability of machines, and uh, this particular outage is a little bit extended because there's a bit of damage that we have to deal with. And when you see outage you mean an outage of the unit yeah. not an outage not a customer outage. no 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 they, they basically we have a we have a planning criteria whereby we propose you know uh, to the public utilities board typically that we need to build new generation and uh, they will uh, you know obviously from a diligence point of view put us to the, the the ropes in determining justification but basically we we want to meet all our customer demands and so in that, in that planning process, we do plan on a probabilistic basis. We do uh, look at probabilities of failure and things like that and consider them. And when we make a proposal, we will build a plant that's picked to, to, so we can meet the peak demands of the customer. And, and you know, we do have conservation demand programs out there with respect to our Take Charge Newfoundland uh, program and so on. But at the end of the day, our goal is to serve all our customers' needs, whatever they are. So you mentioned that we're, we're still doing an assessment of the, the d unit that's damaged in Holyrood. Uh, can you explain a little more why it would take several weeks to, to get through that inspection? Well, Holyrood, uh, if you've seen, looked at pictures of Holyrood, it's a, it's a, there are three machines, it's a huge building, a lot of facilities out there, and it's a basically a high-pressure steam turbine. So there's thousands of pounds of steam that move through, water, seawater for cooling, and there's uh, tons and tons of steel and copper and insulation that are rotating at 3600 RPM, and just to go in and say fix it is uh, not that simple. You know, if we have to dismantle the machine, there's a lot of energy had to go in, a lot of resources, a lot of our own staff, and we, you know, we actually contract specialized resources to help with that, and there's a, there's a process to do it. A normal, over, a normal overhaul, which we would do basically every nine years or so on a steam turbine, uh, can take uh, three, four, five months, depending on what we have to repair. Okay. 
so can you explain how Hydro will manage the electricity system with this unit being unavailable? Okay. So what we have, as I mentioned a minute ago, we have uh, you know a whole bunch of generation. Uh, and uh, we also would look at cooper cooperating with Newfoundland Power, industrial customers, and some of the power producers that we regularly buy power from to try to maximize generation over the, su over the uh, supper time peak primarily. And so it, it's not, it's not a, uh, an issue that we don't have the energy. We have lots of energy. We just got to, we're, for the lack of a better word, we're, we're just missing a few horsepower that we normally have in our uh, arsenal, if you will. So all, we don't want customers not to do things. We just want them to, if we make the call, that we are in a, you know, in a pinch because of a severe cold weather day or if we have another uh, event on another generator in Betis Bay or Cat Arm, anywhere in the system, uh, if we get in that situation during the supper period, we may want customers to move the demand. So we, we just want to move the peak low. And that would mean when people come home from work, instead of uh, you know turning up, up you know four thermostats, well maybe they turn them back a couple of degrees or they make an effort to turn down thermostats in rooms they aren't using and instead of using you know, the fan room, the kitchen, the dining room, or maybe or the living room, maybe you just say, well, we'll leave the living room closed up this afternoon and stay in the fan room in the kitchen sort of thing until the peak passes. Or instead of, you know, uh, washing and drying clothes, you know, uh, if you wash it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but basically your boiler turns on. And when you go in the dryer, there's a lot of electricity using that. So we just want to move the demand. Thank you very much, Jim, for taking us through uh, all these details. My pleasure.